Step forward to Jesus in our need. Our need of Jesus. Man was originally endowed with noble powers and a well-balanced mind. He was perfect in his being and in harmony with God. His thoughts were pure, his aims holy, but through disobedience his powers were perverted and selfishness took the place of love. His nature became so weakened through transgression that it was impossible for him in his own strength to resist the power of evil. It is impossible for us of ourselves to escape from the pit of sin in which we are sunken. Our hearts are evil and we cannot change them. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. The carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, and neither indeed can it be. Education, culture, the exercise of the will, human effort, all have their proper sphere, but here they are powerless. They may produce an outward correctness of behaviour, but they cannot change the heart. They cannot purify the springs of life. There must be a power working from within, a new life from above, before men can be changed from sin to holiness. That power is Christ. His grace alone can quicken the lifeless faculties of the soul and attract it to God, to holiness. The Saviour said, except a man be born from above, unless he shall receive a new heart, new desires, purposes and motives leading to a new life, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's not enough to perceive the loving kindness of God, to see the benevolence, the fatherly tenderness of his character. It's not enough to discern the wisdom and justice of his law, to see that it is founded upon the eternal principle of love. To all, there is but one answer. Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. When Jacob fled from his father's home, he was weighed down with a sense of guilt. Lonely and outcast as he was, he feared that his sin had cut him off from God, that he was forsaken of heaven. As he slept, a strange light broke upon his vision, and lo, from the plain on which he lay, Vast shadowy stairs seemed to lead upward to the very gates of heaven, and upon them angels of God were passing up and down, while from the glory above the divine voice was heard in a message of comfort and hope. God was made known to Jacob that which met the need and longing of his soul. He was a saviour. With joy and gratitude he saw revealed a way by which he, a sinner, could be restored to communion with God. The mystic ladder of his dream represented Jesus, the only medium of communication between God and man. This is the same figure in which Christ referred in his conversation with Nathaniel when he said, You shall see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. In vain are men's dreams of progress, in vain all efforts for uplifting of humanity, if they neglect the one source of hope and help for the fallen race. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from God. There are no true excellence of character, apart from him. And the only way to God is Christ. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father 
but by me. The heart of God yearns over his earthly children with a love stronger than death. In giving up his Son, he has poured out to us all heaven in one gift. Let's contemplate the amazing sacrifice that has been made for us. Let us try to appreciate the labour and energy that heaven is expending to reclaim the lost and bring them back to the Father's house. Shall we not regard the mercy of God? What more could he do? Let us place ourselves in right relation to him who has loved us with amazing love. Let us avail ourselves of the means provided for us that we may be transformed into his likeness and be restored to fellowship with the ministering angels, to harmony and communion with the Father and the Son. God bless you, friend.